amazing. All right. Good. Good. It's been pretty been bad over in the Lexington area. I think all the rain we had was definitely a contributor this year, whereas last year really wasn't too bad. So I'm going to step in front of you, and that's okay. So just to familiarize you with pink eye, you know how it starts with uh, just a watery eye, uh, a lot of blinking, a lot of tearing. They're afraid, you know, try to get out of the sunlight. Um, and then it progresses to, you'll see this um, staining on the side of their face. Usually the next phase is where the eye gets blue, the cornea turns blue, and that is more of a reaction by the eye, just to, and it's just swelling or edema. So it gets the edema in the eye, and then uh, this is an eye that they've put a, a fluorescein dye in that'll actually pick up an ulcer. And this is what you would really call your classic pink eye picture right here, these two, because you've got all the water, all the watery eye, plus the central ulcer, that central corneal ulcer. Does everybody see that? It's a little better picture over here right in the very center and that is what what we would call textbook for classic pink eye if you have and i, I get the question a lot uh, do i have pink eye or is it ibr the ibr virus which is a respiratory virus ibr virus you will not see that central ulcer the ibr virus causes more of a conjunctivitis so it's, just, it's more of an inflammation of the tissues surrounding the eye like this and you'll see a lot of this uh, matter, you know, this, this uh, uh, just uh, crud, basically, around the eye is more of an, of an IBR situation. Whereas pink eye, you got lots and lots of watery eye because it's painful, really painful. A lot of inflammation, so there's a lot of tearing. And again, you got that central ulcer. The reason you have an ulcer, there's one bacteria that causes pink eye. It's called Moraxella bovis. Only one that's ever been proven as the cause of pink eye. That thing, if, if you look at the bacteria under an electron microscope, it has like little fingers. They're called pili or pili. And those fingers are what grab onto the cornea. Once it attaches, once it attaches to the cornea surface, then it starts, it starts pushing in this toxin or poison into the cornea and actually melts it kills the cells and starts to melt it. So this thing is getting soft. And that's what you see here. It's starting to get really soft. And in and, and this, even more so, you see it, that's called a melting ulcer, is what we actually call these things, because the cornea is basically dissolving. You got some um, redness right around in here. That, that's the healing process. It's trying to get blood vessels out here to heal this cornea. Sometimes if you can catch them, you can actually treat them here and it won't progress. But if it gets any deeper, you'll, you'll get an actual corneal rupture where the structures come through the eye and, and uh, actually stick out. Cattle are a little bit different than uh, most other species in that even if they rupture, even if they have a corneal rupture, these things can heal and they'll actually be able to see again. You know, they get a nice dense scar in that uh, in that place and then they can they can see around the scar so what causes pink eye we talked about i guess you all can go ahead and set it down if you want i don't think i don't think i'll need it so what causes pink eye we know it's the bacteria that, that catches on that eye but why doesn't all why don't all cattle get it it's because you have to have certain conditions for it that cornea a normal healthy cornea is not going to get pink eye. It's got to have an injury, got to have a scratch, got to have some kind of irritation to the cornea in order for that bacteria to grab hold. As long as you got plenty of fluid and the eye is normal, it's going to wash the bacteria off. So your irritants, what would they be? This time of year, sunlight. Sunlight's one of the major ones. Think about when you're out on a boat and you got that sunlight in your eyes off the water. One of, the, it's one of the harshest feelings on your eye, and that definitely da damages the cornea. Seed heads, big, another, another big one. You've got seed heads, they're putting their head down to graze, and it scratches the cornea. Trying to escape from flies, they'll put their head into 
into a bush just to try to get the flies off the head. Flies are the number one reason that pink eye gets all through your herd. You know, usually you don't get one or two scattered cases. Once it gets started, a lot of them get it. Because the face flies, it's the face flies that go in and they eat the secretions around the eye and then they fly to the next one and put and they go to eat the secretions on that eye and just spread spread the bacteria that way. And the face flies themselves have, have kind of scratchy feet. So they can scratch the cornea as well when they go from one one to the next. Another factor we have here in Kentucky that um, makes our pink eye problem worse is our soils are very deficient in copper and selenium. And those two minerals, they're two um, minerals that are very, uh, very necessary in the immune function, okay? If you're deficient in that, then your immune system doesn't work as well. And that goes for everything. That goes for any vaccine you give. They're not going to give a good immune response without adequate levels of selenium and copper. I mentioned that meeting yesterday I was in, and uh, they were talking about a um, really nice registered Angus herd. It was up in uh, uh, northeastern Tennessee, owned by a veterinarian, and they most of the cattle, most of these, most of these black cows had the you know kind of brownish patch right there between their shoulders, right at the withers. And it was a copper deficiency. Even though they were feeding plenty of good minerals, they were so deficient there that they just couldn't get the copper level up and they had horrible pink eye. And this was a vet, both he and, and his dad were veterinarians and they were really struggling with it. Started to do some liver biopsies and found out how deficient they were and had to start actually supplementing with a different type of copper so that they could get the level up. So when you start to see herd level problems, start thinking about, you know, what are my irritants? What, what's causing the cornea to be irritated? And secondly, you know, am I getting enough mineral into my cattle? Don't short them. Don't short them. Don't think I'm feeding, you know, they're going to break me because they're eating so much mineral. They eat it because they need it. And, and think of it this way, they eat a lot. Most of these mineral preparations are for four ounces per head per day. So you're looking at, what, half a bag of mineral for 100 cows per day. And if you got calves out there too, they're going to eat about two ounces per head per day. So you're going to go through a lot of mineral. And it's expensive, but it's, it's definitely uh, something we need to address. When we see big respiratory outbreaks at our lab, and I'm talking big ones where you know, somebody will have a death loss of 15 or 20 500 pound calves in the first week after they buy them. Think about that for a little bit and how much that hurts. It's not only did they lose them, but they treated them all with Draxin at least twice. So they've got a ton of money tied up in these stalker calves. When we go in and do necropsies, we also take a sample of the liver and run them for micro minerals. And across the board, across the board, we've got low copper, low selenium. And they'll be so low, they don't even show up on our, on our range. You know, we have reference ranges. They'll be way down below the low. So we definitely have a problem here as far as mineral goes. So how do you prevent, prevent pink eye? is basically uh, maximize your herd immune status. Again, that's your trace minerals, good nutrition. Uh, everybody asks me, do vaccines work? Do pink eye vaccines work? What do you all think? Do you use them? No, no, one no over here. Anybody, anybody use them? Anybody use pink eye vaccine? Here's one. A lot of people use them in Lexington. I think around in the, in the Lexington area, uh, most people do, and they do work. They actually do contribute. They help. Uh, they help stop the, um, the, maybe that not not necessarily stop the disease, but they limit it. It's not nearly as severe with the vaccine. Very hard to cover pink eye with just a vaccine. There's no there again. There's no magic silver bullet to to stop it. <coughs> Treatment. Um, Treatment has traditionally been LA-200, 
You know, we've used that for years and years and, and worked well to treat these cases. We're starting to see a lot of resistance to LA-200. We're starting to see two things along the lines of pink eye. One is we're starting to see more in the winter time. In the last two years, I've had calls in February about winter time pink eye. So that's something that's coming. Um, second thing that we're dealing with is this resistance to LA-200. It's having to start using other drugs. Probably new floor is the most common one to use on a second, you know, if you don't see a response to LA-200, new floor is the next one. And then Draxin would be uh, another one that's very popular. Of course, Draxin <laughs> is so low dose, a lot of people like to use it in a dart gun. And they can dart them in the field, and then they don't have to, uh, they don't actually have to get them up to treat. So I think that's all I've got on that. Um, any questions? Why are you seeing it more, uh, pink eye in February? It's a, there's a new bacteria called Moraxella bivoculi, which is not considered a cause of pink eye, but it's found secondarily. It's usually when we culture an eye, you know, actually take a swab, plate it out and culture it, we're going to get Moraxella bovis. And then we've got this new one, Moraxella bivoculi. And it tends to, it, it probably likes cooler weather. It's adapted. It's just adapted to a cooler temperature. So it tends to grow well in that time of year. The other thing we deal with is in, in the winter time, a lot of people feed brown bales of hay and just let the, let the cattle stick their head in. And so you get a lot of stems, a lot of stems that damage the eye. But, you know, those are the only things we can come up with. But there have been, you wouldn't believe the number of calls I get in February on pink eye to really be, be a problem at the beginning. What's the other strand? The sheep strand? Or? That's the bivocula. Used to be called um, Ovis, yeah. and they changed it. They've changed the name. They've changed the name of that that one bacteria almost three times, I think. But it has, they finally settled on more excellent bivocula. So are cultured vaccines better? Your question is, question was, are the cultured vaccines better where they actually take a sample of the pink eye, plate it out, grow the bacteria, and then make a vaccine specific for that. They do work, and they do work pretty well. The problem is they, they don't give you, you, you couldn't use the same vaccine year after year. After about two years, you need to reculture and, and have a new one made because the bacteria changes, and it's, it's very good at changing. I talked about those pili on the or pili on the surface of the bacteria, those things can change and they change rapidly. So that's why our vaccines never are really great because of the change in that bacteria. Any other questions? All right, Kevin, you're up.